All the time, we see people who are really confused about heat pumps. How do they work? What's this crazy magic where you put in one kilowatt of electricity and you get three to five kilowatts of energy out? What's going on? How does this work? How is it even possible? Surely it breaks the first law of thermo thermodynamics, right? That energy is neither created or destroyed. Hey, it's Phil from Euroheat, and today I'll give you a really, really simple way to think about heat pumps and how they work. So a lot of the time, people ask, how do heat pumps work? And we used to say ourselves, you know, the technical explanation. You know, there's a condenser and an evaporator and an uh, expansion valve and a compressor. And, you know, it works in this phase change and refrigerant and boiling point and saturation point, all this stuff. Honestly, what does that all mean, right? Like, who cares? <laughs> you just want to know roughly how it works, where it's getting this energy from. The most simplest explanations say it works like a fridge, but in reverse. <laughs> but that doesn't really give you much either. Let me, let me take you through a simple way to think about it. So what the heat pump does is it actually pumps heat. It moves energy from, from one place to another. And that doesn't mean it grabs, you know, let's say 50 degrees from over here and then it turns it into 50 degree water over here that you can use. How it actually works is it collects energy from a, from a big pool of available resources and it sort of compresses or condenses this within the heat pump and spits it out into uh, a usable form which you can use for say your air conditioning, your floor heating, your pool heating, your hot water, whatever it may be. So if you think about a kettle, a kettle is a small cylinder and it has that plate down the bottom with the electric element and it has to really like force in a lot of electricity into this small area to heat up or to boil the water that you have in the kettle. So it uses a lot of energy. Whereas the heat pump, instead of collecting its energy from a really confined space, it collects it from a large area. So with geothermal, there are pipes in the ground either vertically or horizontally and there's quite a lot of pipes and because they need to be able to collect energy from a large area. The same with water, water source. But the difference is that on, a, on the HVAC side, it might just be small, but it's actually circulating water, say from an aquifer or a lake or, or the ocean, it's circulating that water and it has basically constant supply to a fresh water. And it's also the same with air to water, which is what we all know and recognize as air conditioning. And what happens there is if, if there wasn't a fan there outside, in the box outside, moving the air across the heat exchanger coils, what would happen is that not much energy would be exchanged because it would just be sort of stagnant, it would be like the kettle. It would just be in one place and the energy would be concentrated there. So the trick is with these heat pumps is instead of just working like the kettle in this stationary position, they take what they can from around them and say in the case of the air to water, the fan is continually moving fresh air past the heat exchange coils to be able to collect this energy. So you might still be thinking this doesn't make sense, how does it generate say 50 degree water if we have a five degree air temperature outside like how is that possible it's five degrees but we end up with 50 degrees and the reason is it's all to do with temperature differentials and temperature differences and the amount of sort of area we have where we can harvest the energy so the reason why we can make 50 degree water from that five degrees outside is because we're collecting as much energy as we can from every cubic meter of air but the thing is we don't just have access to that one cubic meter that surrounds the heat pump we are pushing you know thousands and thousands of liters through the heat pump every hour so that means that we don't just have one cubic meter of five degrees but we have thousands and thousands of cubic meters of five degree air from which we from every cubic meter we can grab a little bit of heat and we can sort of put it all together and then on the other side, we can create that 50 degrees. And the same works with say the water source or the ground source or the geothermal, where it's, it's basically grabbing all this energy from a really large surface area, as opposed to the kettle that we talked about earlier. This might still sound crazy, but let me tell you this. If we compare, let's say, uh, to zero degrees, if we compare a mug of boiling water at 100 degrees, you think this has got quite a lot of heat energy in it. And now on the other hand, let's consider a bathtub, which is only at five degrees, which is freezing cold. You would only last a minute maybe or something maximum in this bathtub, it's, it's, that's so cold. And so you would think from this that the mug of boiling hot water of 100 degree water has more energy in it 
compared to the bathtub, which has five degree water, if we compare both of them to, let's say, a base point of zero degrees. But the crazy thing is, the bathtub has 30 times the amount of heat energy in it, that five degree water has 30 times the amount of heat energy in it, compared to this mug of 100 degree boiling hot water. And it all comes down to the volume that we, where we can harvest this energy from, and also the temperature differential. So now let's imagine this. Let's say a bathtub full of five degree water is our energy source, is, it's, that's where we're going to harvest our heat energy from. And let's say we want to heat up this mug of water to 100 degrees. Sure, that sounds ridiculous, but it's actually possible. So in the middle, we put this heat pump, which its sole job to do is to just harvest small amounts of energy from the ground, from the water, from the air, and basically condense this into a high temperature and usable form. So we can actually heat up with this bathtub full of five degree water, we can create 30 mugs of boiling water. So that's what the heat pump does, is it takes heat from one place, even though it might be low value heat, and it moves it to another place in the form of say high value heat. And it can do this either way. So that means that you can either add heat to something or you can take heat away and get rid of it and put it elsewhere. So that means either heating or cooling. So if you would like some help with designing, installing, and even creating a custom heat pump for your specific use or application, be it your, be it your sustainable house, luxury house, it could be a hotel, a brewery, a winery, dairy production facility, whatever it may be, give us a call at Euroheat. We're engineers and installers with 27 years of experience in WA, and we'd love to help you too.